Welcome back to the Gift Up Podcast. And I want to do an update on the week three picks just because a lot of the lines did change. There was a lot of injuries this week. So I do want to clarify some games so we can get the picks the way that they need to be. As I said before, the first thing that you want to do with gambling is create the spread before you look at what Vegas has set. Because if you just go and you start looking at what Vegas has set and then you start thinking, well, should I take the point? Should I not? You're not giving yourself a clear view of the game. So by you creating the spread before you see what Vegas has, you're giving your a clear cut what you view the game as before you start to get your head messed with. So for me, that's the number one rule. And then the rest just kind of falls into place like we keep talking about. Don't go against your gut. Um, Always ahead of time, pick games that you like before you view somebody else's opinion. That Again, that goes into what creating the spread is all about in a way, too. So with that, I'm going to implement that rule into this week when we update these picks here. And I'll show you guys how it works. So. Just starting with that Panthers game on Thursday night football, I think that's a great example because I had that set exactly almost at what Vegas had it set initially. I had it at Texans plus four, Vegas had it at three and a half, and then with the injury to Tyrod, it went up during the week to Texans plus eight. But for a long portion of that game, and you can see why I had it at only four, it wasn't like Carolina was greatly better than the Texans. That was a close game up until the end, and then Carolina pulled away. But even with an injured quarterback and, you know, a quarterback that's never even really played, the Texans still kept that game close for most of the game. And that's what I'm talking about. When you get two teams on an even playing field, it's either if they're really, really close, it's in that pick to two-point range. And then if it's like if one team's a little bit better, like Carolina was a little bit better, then you're going to hit that three – to the five and a half mark. And then if you think it could be a potential blowout or a team is like, you know, you know, they're, they're pretty much better than the other team, you go six or above. So just using that as an example and then how the game played out, that's how you would set the lines. So let's get into the games that are going to be happening tomorrow. And I'm really looking forward to actually not having to leave at four o'clock tomorrow to drive to Albany. I actually get to sit and watch all the games. I get to start growing my hair back a little bit. It's, it feels good to get done those eight weeks at the Academy. I'm just a lot more relaxed this weekend. And again, thank you guys for the support on here. Um, it really meant a lot. All the, the go gifts go grind through it. You can do it and all that stuff mentally strong. It just, all those comments really helped me. So thank you. Let's start with the Colts versus the Titans. I had that initially set before I looked at what Vegas had at the Titans minus two. I really view that as an even playing field. Carson Wentz is playing, so there should be no issues with that game. Not too many injuries on that. So Vegas has it set at Tennessee minus five and a half. So they actually want to give us uh, three and a half points. So I'm going to take the points in that game. I don't see any reason why the Colts can't keep that close. This Titans defense has had some issues so far this year. The Colts have one of the better offensive lines in the league. If they can get play action going with Wentz, even without a lot at receiver, I still think they can keep the game close. A little bit worried about the Indy secondary, but I think the front seven for Indy will at least get some pressure, stop the run, make life a little bit difficult for Tannehill. Um, So there's an instance where Vegas is giving us extra points, in my opinion. Next game, Falcons versus Giants. I had that set at Giants minus three before I looked at what Vegas had. And right now it's exactly at still Giants minus three. Uh, And because it's right on the dot, because I think three points is what it's going to take for Atlanta to keep the game close, I'm going to take the points. That's how that works. If If the spread is dot on for what you predicted, you take the points. And that's a matchup where... Giants may have a couple more weapons on offense. Uh, Defensively, I think the teams are fairly even. And the Falcons actually trump them on the offensive line. I think they're even at quarterback. Daniel Jones is a baller. So is Matt Ryan. So you can see pretty much even game. Uh, Giants are at home. They got a little bit more with the weapons. So I'm giving them the minus three. 
Um, I like the Giants defense maybe like a tick more. So that's why it's not anything crazy like four or five points. And then um, since they're a little bit better, I hit that three mark. It's not like totally even. So it's not 0 to 2 points. Next game, Chargers versus Chiefs. I had that set at the Chiefs minus four. And right now that they have it set at Chiefs minus seven. So I'm going to take the seven uh, with the Chargers, Chargers to cover Kansas City to win. Like I said about Kansas City before, yes, the threat of them blowing a team out is always there. But right now, Casey does have a couple injury issues going on. We know Frank Clark is banged up. Uh, We know Chris Jones is a little bit banged up, even though he's going to play. And I think that plays into the Chargers' hands because you start to think about Herbert with all those weapons that are healthy, with time in the pocket, throwing that football down the field on that KC secondary. I think they could keep that game close. Plus get the run game going a little bit with Eckler. I like the way that sounds. And the Chargers' defense right now, we know Bosa is a little bit banged up, but it looks like he's going to play. Derwin James still a little bit nicked up, but he's going to play. I think they could put forth a good effort in this game. And to me, seven, Vegas giving us three extra points. I like that. Next game, Bengals versus Steelers. I thought that was going to be Steelers minus five and a half. I did factor the Big Ben injury a little bit into that because he isn't going to be 100%. You know, maybe that if Big Ben was fully healthy and the Steelers were deeper on defense and had a better offensive line, I probably would shoot that spread up to like eight, seven and a half around there. But because of some of the issues that the Steelers have, you know, TJ Watt a little bit banged up. They don't have a deep defense, at least in my opinion, they don't. Uh, Offensive line issues, Big Ben injury. So Steelers are still better. I think they're better coached as well. So I have that at Steelers minus five and a half. I don't think it's quite in blowout territory, but they are a better football team. And Vegas has that set. And I'm looking at the live lines right now. That went all the way down to Pittsburgh minus three. So that's a big turnaround. That that line changed quite a bit this week. So because it's only the Steelers minus three, and I thought it was going to be minus five and a half, I got the Steelers to win and cover that game. I think they can straight up beat Cincy, and if they're going to beat them, I think they can beat them by more than a field goal. But pay attention to you know game time decisions and stuff. Like if last second Berger doesn't play, then obviously you know then it's it's not going to work out. But if Berger's playing and everything is is set to go, then I think they can cover that three. Vegas wants to give us two and a half extra points on the favorite side. I'll take it. Initially, I like the Bengals to cover because it opened up at six and a half, and that was a point and a half. um, Vegas was going to give us a point and a half, but now that it's down to three, I think the Steelers can take care of that. Next game, Bears versus Browns. I had that set at Browns either minus eight and a half or eight. That was the ballpark for that. So let's go see what that is set at. Going down the line here on Vegas Insider, live lines being updated. So this is spot on. We got Cleveland minus seven and a half. So because I have it set at eight and a half, And that's like really close too. That's really close. But I'm going to go with the eight and a half. It's a full point down. So even though it's still a lot of points, I'm going to take Cleveland to win and cover that game. It's a full point. Full point in either direction, you go in that direction. So it's a point less than what we thought it was going to be. They want to give us a point. I'm taking the favorite in that game. Glad we're doing this updating thing. Uh, This weekend is going to be the last weekend that I – at least I hope that I'm going to be recording like way early. But even if it isn't, I'm going to do these update videos uh, when I can. And that way we get the fresh lines and how the pick should be. So let's jump over now to – and with the Browns-Bears game, um, the Browns are just significantly better on pretty much every facet over the Bears. So I'm actually glad that that went down a point and that we get to take the, the Browns as the favorite there. Next, Ravens versus Lions. I had that set at the Lions plus seven and a half. Let's see what Vegas has set here for that game. Vegas has it set exactly at that seven and a half mark. So uh, some actually have it at eight, but 
a half a point doesn't change your pick. So it has to be a full point in either direction. So because they're giving us spot on what we predicted, I'm going to take the points in that game. I know Detroit is not a team that you can trust. We saw what happened in that Green Bay game last week. It was an embarrassment. They actually looked like they were going to be in the game early on, then just completely crapped out. Right now, with some of the things that Baltimore is going through, Lamar Jackson maybe not 100%. I keep saying there's uh, not a ton at receiver. If you can just shadow Mark Andrews and keep Hollywood Brown in check, you know, Watkins to me eventually is going to get hurt. He's probably already hurting with some kind of nagging injury that they're keeping quiet. Ronnie Stanley is hurt on the offensive line. We know the issues with the Baltimore running back core. So if the Lions come to physically play and they give Jared Goff time in the pocket, I think they can keep it within seven and a half. So Detroit to cover Baltimore to win. Next game, Saints versus Pats. I thought that was going to be Saints minus two and a half. I think as time goes on, like towards the end of the year, and then especially next year, I think the Patriots are going to be a lot better. But right now, they're still trying to find themselves. And to me, the Saints are just more prepared. That's as plain as I can put it. I think right now the Saints' defense is a little bit better. Um, I think the Saints' offensive line is a little bit better, and obviously the running back core a little bit better, and Winston right now a little bit better than Mac Jones. So uh, I don't think the Saints are leaps and bounds better, but that's why I have it set at Saints minus two and a half. I don't because there's not like a lot of like star players that are like there's not like five or six star players on the Saints that are significantly better than what the uh, Patriots have. They're just to me, they're more deep right now and then more prepared coaching wise and and continuity wise um, as far as like being a veteran and and being together uh, longer. So that's I have it set minus two and a half. Vegas has that set. At. And I'm trying to find it on the Vegas Insider here, the latest line. They got that at Patriots actually minus three. So that's a big 180. Um, I thought it was going to be Saints minus two and a half. They want to give us uh, the Saints with three. I'm going to take that for the reasons I said. I think the Saints are just more prepared right now than the Patriots. And we did make that a money pick uh, for the on the original spread video, and the money picks are still going to stay the same. So don't worry about that. No matter no matter what, unless the line changes drastically or there's a big injury. Next up, Cardinals versus Jags. I had that set at Cardinals minus four and a half, and Vegas has that set at Arizona minus seven and a half. So they want to give us. Three extra points, and I'm going to take the points. Jacksonville to cover, Arizona to win. A lot of you guys called me stupid. Not all of you, but some some comments about me taking the Vikings last week with the two and a half, and I told you uh, that this Arizona defense is booty cheek, um, and it still is booty cheek. Uh, they got problems in the secondary. J.J. Watt's going to tear a pectoral muscle, and Chandler Jones is going to be the lone dog up front. That's That's what it's going to be. The Arizona offensive line is put together with bubble gum and duct tape. They don't have a lot at receiver outside of Hopkins. A.J. Green eventually is going to get a nagging injury. They don't have a lot at the running back core. So how much better are they really than Jacksonville? I know Jacksonville has their issues, especially in the front seven. But if Arizona is not going to physically come out there and pound the rock on them and get play action going and take advantage of that Jags defense, then the Jags are going to be in this football game. Trevor Lawrence with time. They got weapons on the offensive side. They got a good power runner. They have, you know, again, good receivers. Lawrence with play action. They're going to keep this game close. Uh, To me, seven and a half is way too much. So, again, I went minus four and a half there just because I I think Arizona is a little bit better. Uh, You know, a few players like they got players like Chandler Jones up front where the Jags don't have anybody like that in the front seven. Kyler Murray is electric, so that factors in. Um, you know, D-Hop is banged up right now as well, so it's not like even he's 100%, but he's obviously a superstar. So th- th- those things do have an impact. Um, but, again, it looks like Vegas, I think they might be sleeping on that game a little bit. I think they're overestimating Arizona like a lot of people did last week against the Vikings. 
I, I can't believe people actually told me that they thought Arizona had a top defense after that first t- game against the Titans. I was like, chill the fuck out. They don't. And obviously you saw how many points the Vikings put up. Next game, Washington versus Buffalo. I have that set at Buffalo minus six and a half. And let's see how far this line went up. Oh, not much. Buffalo minus seven. So it's not more than a half a point or more than a point. So, yeah, you take the the points with that. Uh, Washington to cover. Bills to win, spot on almost to what we had predicted. So, again, if it's within a half a point or spot on, you take the points. That's the rule. That actually went down a lot because I saw this go up and down all week. At one point, it was actually Washington plus nine. So I hope some of you got that when it was at that point. I think Washington is equipped to take it to Buffalo. I don't think Washington's going to win the game by any means, but Washington does have a good defense to keep them in the game. Pressure Josh Allen, you know, keep it close. And then offensively, even though Washington isn't high flying, they have, don't have a lot of weapons, they know how to physically play football. They're not going to back down. And how they play is pound the rock, then play action, and then rifle it down the middle of the field. And players like McLaurin and that, the groups they have at tight end, they're going to go over the middle and take some shots and fearlessly play some football. And that's how Washington moves the rock. So, so far this season, it seems that Buffalo does struggle a little bit when teams physically take it to the the corners and the DBs. I think Washington could do that. And again, uh, we know Buffalo is like an AFC championship caliber game and Washington probably isn't even going to be a playoff team this year. Um, So that's why I had it set at six and a half, you know, to where it, you know, it might be an easy victory for Buffalo, but Washington still has some firepower there, some fight in this game. Next game, Jets versus Broncos. I had that set at Broncos minus five. So let's see what Vegas is dealing us here with that game. Wow. Okay. They got this set at Denver minus ten and a half. Either take the points in that game or don't bet it. But I think Robert Sala could possibly come up with a game plan for Teddy Bridgewater. If the Jets can slow down the run game a little bit, they could force Bridgewater into some tough situations. Um, I look at some of the injuries going on with Denver right now, like to Jerry Judy. To me, that's I think it's more of an impactful injury than people think because it's not giving them as many weapons on the outside to take pressure off the run game. I know Denver has a good offensive line, but there are, you know, Teddy Bridgewater without max, um, max protection and without – you know, a really good system, it, he could struggle. And then the injury to Bradley Chubb, that's enormous. I mean, here we go again, you know, with the injuries on the defensive side. I think that's going to be a problem. And if, look, I'm not a big Zach Wilson fan, but if he's not going to be under pressure, we've seen what he can do. So 10 and a half points, uh, either take the points or don't bet it. Pretty simple. Next game, Dolphins versus Raiders. I had that set initially at Dolphins minus two. Let's see what they bump that to. Um, so they're going to give us three and a half here. Uh, so I, I still i am keeping that a money pick. Um, I picked it at Dolphins plus one. I liked it then, so I like it even more, giving us the three and a half. Brissetta quarterback does worry me. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but... I think that that Miami defense is deeper than Vegas. I think that the defense for Miami can keep them in the game. Vegas right now is hurting on the offensive line. We know Incognito's out. They had the other injury to Denzel Good, I believe, already a week ago. Um, Josh Jacobs is banged up. They don't have a lot at receiver. So I don't see any reason why Miami can't keep that game close. And I feel like Vegas is sleeping on Miami a little bit in that game. Brissett, time in the pocket. If Miami can get the run game going, physically take it to that Vegas defense, uh, we know Ngakwe is not 100% either. I don't see any. I like that still. All right, let's move on to Seahawks versus Vikings. I had that set at Seahawks minus four. And I'm sorry because I did have a few drinks before uh, that week three video I did uh, last weekend. 
and I, I botched that completely. I, I literally said I was going to take the Vikings to cover Seattle to win. Then I switched it on the video and said Seattle to win and cover. So I'm sorry about that, guys. I try not to make mistakes like that because this is some serious stuff. This is money that you're betting on these games. So I had it set at Seahawks minus four. And right now, Vegas has it set at Seahawks only minus two. Some lines, they have it at only minus one and a half. So I'm taking Seattle to win and cover. I think about Russell Wilson in this game with time in the pocket against that Vikings secondary that's had a lot of issues. Zimmer, I mean, he just can't come up with a good game plan. I mean, I haven't seen a good game plan for him in quite some time. The only thing that worries me a little bit in this game is the Vikings offense physically taking it to the Seattle defense because right now Seattle's defensive front seven is just simply not good on paper. That's the bottom line. We know the Vikings got Delvin Cook. Then once you get play action going with Kirk Cousins, he's dangerous to when he starts rifling into Jefferson and Thielen on the outside. So I am a little bit worried about that, but I thought it was going to be more points. You're going to give me Russell Wilson. You know, there's a chance that Seattle could score in almost every possession in this game or, or close to it. I mean, I'm, that's the kind of feel I'm getting. So, you know, basically almost a pick game, I'm going to take Seattle to win and cover. Next game, uh, this was our, another one of our money picks, uh, Bucks versus Rams. I had that set at Bucks minus four. And right now the Bucks are only minus one, so or one and a half. So Vegas wants to give us three points. I'm going to take it. I know that these teams have played each other really tough in the past. I know you got Matt Stafford with expert play calling with those weapons against that Bucks secondary. Yeah, of course it worries me a little bit, but there's a lot of stuff that you got to worry about on the Tampa Bay side too. You know, even without Antonio Brown in the lineup, you still have a ton of weapons. And this, to me, Tampa Bay is just going to keep getting better as the weeks go on. And the Rams aren't what they were last year on defense. They lost a lot of pieces in the secondary. As I keep saying, this is stuff that we got to remember. They don't have their defensive coordinator that helped turn that ship around to the number one defense last year. Outside of Aaron Donald and Leonard Floyd in the front seven, they don't have a ton either. So I just look at the greatest of all time with all those weapons. You know, even though JPP is banged up right now, for Tampa Bay, they still have a deep defense up front. I think they're going to do enough to get the W. And again, at only minus one and a half to one point, uh, that's pretty much a pit game. So unless you think Tampa's going to lose, you take the Bucks there, and it's one of my money picks. I like it. I don't. Again, I don't think the Bucks are going to have a slow week. For me, the Bucks just they're going to keep progressing. It's not going to go backwards for them because just like last year, what happened with the Bucks, they got better each week. And by the end of the year, it was like, holy shit, like, you know, what, what our team's going to do against these guys. So here we go. Another week uh, with Brady getting better with his team. Next game, Packers versus 49ers. I thought it was going to be Packers minus three. I know, and I, I know a lot of things are going wrong with the Packers so far this year. They don't look overly appealing. That offensive line is trash. There is no doubt about that. Uh, and the injury to Z Smith on the defensive line really leaves them depleted for a pass rush and also against the run. But I still think the Packers are more deeper than the 49ers. So uh, not by like, you know, leaps and bounds, but they are a little bit deeper. So I thought it was going to be Green Bay minus three, and they're actually going to give us three points. They're giving Aaron Rodgers three points. To me, you don't do that. If they can somehow take care of Bosa up front, Rodgers gets some time. Like, because you guys know when Rodgers is on, he's on. And I think you could take advantage of that San Francisco secondary and over the middle of the field as well. I also, uh, I, I like the defensive line for Sam Fran, but I, the way Aaron Jones is running right now, it's just really, really physical, really phenomenal. So right now, the way Green Bay's headed, I think they're going to keep getting a little bit better, even with some of the issues that they've had so far. Uh, I'm taking them. I'm taking the hot hand with Green Bay. Uh, matchup does scare me a little bit with that game uh, because San Francisco, the way they play football, they're equipped. Like, remember the first week when the Saints completely killed the Packers and we took the Saints to cover that point spread, the four and a half? It, it's because they run first. They got a decent offensive line, and the Packers' defense is still a little bit weak against the run. And then once they get play action going, that's when the Packers really just get spread out and they don't know what the hell they're doing. With on the coaching side of it. Um, so I'm worried about that a little bit, but I just view Green Bay as the better team. Uh, 
by a little bit, and they want to give us points on top of it, so I'm going to take them with the points. And I believe we just have one more left. Um, Eagles versus Cowboys. I had that set at Cowboys minus three and a half. And Vegas still, that's exactly what they got it set as. So because I think that that's what it's going to take to keep Philly close in the game, where the points are spot on or within a half a point, you take the points. So Philly to cover, Dallas to win. If you want to just, I can talk about that matchup. Uh, Offensive lines, pretty much. Um, even Dallas has a little bit better offensive line now with the injury to Brandon Brooks up front for Philly. Uh, Philly just can't catch a break on that offensive line every single year, injury after injury. Uh, at receiver, obviously, Dallas is better. Um, you know, Philly has uh, Devonta Smith, Jalen Rieger's all right, but Dallas obviously way deeper. Cooper and, and Gallup and those guys. Um, running back. Obviously, Dallas a little bit better with Zeke, although I do like Miles Sanders. I think he's pretty damn good, but Zeke is a little bit better. Quarterback, uh, Dak a little bit better, but I don't think it's by like a long shot, but he is better than Jalen Hurts is right now. Uh, So that's why like not leaps and bounds better, but that's why I had it at the three and a half. And then defensively, uh, Dallas is to me a little bit better, not greatly better. They're better in the linebacking core little bit better in the secondary, uh, but Philly's better on the defensive line. So it's not like it's greatly better. Again, that's why I had it three and a half, uh, especially with the injury to Demarcus Lawrence. So a little bit of an even playing field there, and they want to give us the points we wanted for that game. So I'm going to take those points. Uh, So with that, guys, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. I am going to get to the week four picks today. I know that you guys don't like that. I don't either, but I'm working five days. I'm off too. I I don't get to choose this. Um, I'm hoping like after this week, once I get on my work routine, I'll be actually home by three, four o'clock. And then I can start to make these picks on a Tuesday for you guys or a Monday after all the games have been played after we learn about the injuries. So I know that that's I, that's ideal. That's what we want to be. Uh, but right now, I simply don't have a choice in the matter. But honestly, I think it actually helps us a little bit when we pick the games early because it gives us more time to talk about the games. And it also lets us clearly look at the matchups without getting influenced week to week. Remember, that's one of our other rules. Don't let one game define what you think about a team. And Arizona, to me, was like that best example of that. Uh, so far because that that example of how they played against the titans in week one that skew that made everybody get all messed up in the head and they thought they were going to blow out the vikings the next week don't let that happen view these teams like you viewed them before the season started on an even playing field and then measure them up that you know then measure up the teams don't take it week by week and say well they blew out this team and i think this team's better than that so they should win this week no that's not how it works View it how they how before the season started, unless there is a major injury. You know, I told like with the Texans game, I told you guys I posted a couple comments um, a day before, two days before the game. I said, okay, Tyrod's out, stay away from it. You know, just stay away from it. If there's a major injury, that's the only way. But like, here's okay, here's a good example of that. Like, let's say let's take Denver for instance. So at receiver, they have what Hamler, I believe, right, with uh, Sutton still. So Jerry Judy got hurt, and like I said, yeah, that's a, that's a blow. But it's not going to influence the point spread because they still have weapons. You see what I'm saying? But let's say Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy were out for the year, and now you got Teddy Bridgewater without a passing game. Okay, that might influence the spread a point or two. So just something to look at, guys. So with that, make sure to hit the like button share the videos and subscribe. I'll be talking about the week four games in a little bit.